Qui-Gon Jinn was one of the most important figures in Anakin Skywalker's life, even though they only knew each other for a short time. When Qui-Gon found Anakin on Tatooine and came to believe that he was the chosen one, the young boy gained a father figure. Not only did Qui-Gon offer him his freedom from the life of a slave, but he also ushered him into the world of the Jedi and the Force. Qui-Gon was an unusual Jedi, known as a maverick within the Order. Trained by the equally rebellious Dooku, he often questioned the Jedi Code and the directions of the High Council. That's what made Qui-Gon so special. While the rest of the Jedi had already lost their way, focusing too much on politics and the Senate, he was focused only on serving the will of the Force and maintaining peace. That's why Qui-Gon was so important to Anakin. He was exactly the master that Anakin needed. When Qui-Gon died, Anakin's fate was decided, leaving him with only Obi-Wan as his teacher and sealing his dark destiny of becoming Darth Vader. But what were Anakin's thoughts when Qui-Gon was killed? How did Anakin react to his first master's sudden death? And how did this determine where Anakin's path was going to go? Luckily, all of that is explained in the canon book Skywalker, A Family at War. Had Anakin been more attuned to the Force, he may have felt the tremor that reverberated as Qui-Gon's life was extinguished from the physical world. Instead, he learned the news when he returned from flying a starfighter during the Battle of Naboo. In a few short days, Anakin's life was completely altered and reimagined by the guidance and teachings of the mysterious Jedi Master. With Qui-Gon's swift demise, all Anakin could wonder was what would happen to him. In the darkest corners of his mind, fear sent him spiraling into hypothetical scenarios where he was forced back into slavery, never to see his mother again. Although no one realized what was at stake at the time, Anakin's very future hung in the balance that day. Had Qui-Gon survived and Darth Maul had been vanquished, Anakin would have been raised under the watchful, calm tutelage of an experienced teacher. Although the two would likely have had their disagreements, Qui-Gon's compassion for Anakin might have brought about a different outcome. Perhaps Qui-Gon himself would have helped his Padawan return to Tatooine and free the slaves. At the very least, he would have empathized with Anakin's restlessness with the strict Jedi Code, offering solutions beyond the scope of Obi-Wan Kenobi's regulation-driven mind. Perhaps Shmi Skywalker would have been saved. In either case, the Sith Lord Darth Sidious may well have had a more difficult time manipulating young Anakin's future and twisting his natural gifts into unrecognizable versions of themselves. As it was, almost as quickly as he'd found it, Anakin lost the closest thing he ever had to a paternal presence, a willing guide with an unshakable belief in his abilities. For those precious few days, Qui-Gon was a calm advisor, a much-needed buoy for the stormy passions of the young boy. The specter of Qui-Gon would loom large in Anakin's thoughts as he embarked on his quest to become a Jedi, and the trauma of losing his master would haunt him in a unique way. Qui-Gon had represented a bridge between Anakin's former enslaved self and the vast unknown, a future of infinite possibilities that he was only beginning to grasp. The only remaining constant in Anakin's life was the Force itself. Watching Qui-Gon's body burn to ash on a funeral pyre, Anakin felt a profound sense of loss. In light of the prophecy, he wondered if his very existence had somehow brought danger upon his mentor. With Obi-Wan's help, Anakin hoped to prove Qui-Gon's most earnest and heartfelt belief, that he was truly the Chosen One. When the calm, caring, guiding influence of Qui-Gon was gone, Anakin's new master, Obi-Wan, stepped in to fill that void. As Anakin grew up, he idolized his memory of Qui-Gon, especially when he found himself at odds with Obi-Wan. Kenobi had made good on his promise to Qui-Gon, fulfilling his dying wish with the blessing of the Jedi Council to take Anakin as his Padawan. Master Yoda was a lone dissenting voice, concerned by the danger he felt inherent in the boy's training. 
In their first years together, Anakin came to see Obi-Wan in much the same reverent light he held Qui-Gon's memory, looking up to his master with awe and unwavering belief. But in his mind's darkest corners, Anakin's perception of his master was gradually colored by doubt he had overheard Obi-Wan express in the past. Kenobi had called him dangerous. No matter how he tried to shake it from his mind, the remark embedded itself in the young boy's subconscious. In moments of despair, Anakin's deepest fears appeared to him as an ugly realization. Because Qui-Gon had died, Obi-Wan was stuck with an apprentice he didn't want or ask for, and one whom he believed would do more harm than good. I think the relationship between Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Anakin is incredibly interesting. It's true that Obi-Wan didn't want Anakin as his student, and he wasn't ready to train him. Whereas Qui-Gon was a very experienced master, and possessed great character and a different view than the rest of the Jedi, Obi-Wan had only just become a Jedi Knight when he immediately took Anakin as his Padawan, and he was much more strict and traditional. That's why Anakin and Obi-Wan clashed so frequently, although they did form a close bond as the years went on. I think that Obi-Wan did his best to train Anakin, so I wouldn't blame him as much for the creation of Vader. Palpatine's manipulations mixed with the dogma of the Jedi Order and Anakin's own choices created Darth Vader. It was a combination of different failures that led to Anakin's fall to the dark side. If Anakin had Qui-Gon guiding him, empathizing with him, and helping him in a compassionate way, things would have turned out very differently. Thank you guys for watching this video, and may the Force be with you.